discuss the initial planning and layout of your electromotive system. This video applies to installations of both XDI ignition systems and tech engine management systems. We'll cover the more specific aspects of the wiring in another video, as the purpose of this video is to help you plan your installation so that you might avoid some of the more common pitfalls. Now, proper install planning can ensure not only smooth installation, but also prevent headaches down the road if and when the vehicle needs to be worked on. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the ECU location. Whether you're installing an XDI or a tech system, there are certain qualifications every installation location should meet. Now, first, make sure the location will keep the ECU away from potential environmental related issues. Uh, while all electromotive systems are designed for automotive use and can handle relatively rough conditions, try to avoid installing the computer in areas where it'll see greater stresses than necessary. Um, mostly, the units would be mounted within the vehicle uh, and out of reach of most of the hazards. Um, certain vehicles, such as open wheel cars, uh, off-road racers, boats, etc., uh, might require a little more creative installation. Um, now, the most important things to keep in mind when picking a location are to keep the unit away from direct heat, never install the unit near the exhaust system or other high temp areas. Uh, the system should not see ambient temperatures uh, above 85C or 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, make sure that the unit has good air circulation in its chosen location, so don't stuff it underneath the carpeting in, a, in your hot rod or uh, you know, keep it in a very small, tight, enclosed area. It should get a fair amount of circulation around the, around the heat sinks on the, on the chassis. Um, the unit should not come in direct contact with or be submerged in water. General moisture and humidity will not damage the unit, unless, of course, we're dealing with salt water, in which case you should probably be mounting it in a moisture-proof enclosure anyway. Um, make sure the unit is as accessible as possible. If using this in a racing application, try to mount the unit so that the driver can see the status lights on the side of the unit. These can come in handy if there's any issues with the running of the vehicle and you're trying to determine if they're ECU related or not. Um, now, if the unit does have to be hidden from general view, like in a custom street rod or something that, you know, having the ECU out on the dashboard isn't a possibility, uh, try to make sure that you can access the unit in the future. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have this thing buried up underneath the dashboard and have somebody go in and put a bunch of work into the interior and God forbid there's a problem with the ECU and you have to remove it and send it in for service, you can't get at it. Um, so anyway, these are some of the things that you want to keep in mind and now we'll move on to what exactly we're going to do with our Nova here. Now, for our Nova, the car owner wanted the unit in a less conspicuous location, but he also wanted to be able to show it off. He decided he'd like us to mount the unit in the glove box. And that, of course, gave us a little bit of creative opportunity. So using the old glove box as a pattern, we built this false glove box out of ABS plastic as a mounting location for the control unit. Now, this ended up being just an absolutely perfect mounting location. Um, the unit is easily accessible easily visible with the glove box door open, we can get at the communications port, the status lights are easy to see, uh, and because of the size of the glove box and the false box that we built, we can end up using this to mount some of the other components we'll need to mount for the installation uh, as well. So, After determining the ECU location, figure out where you're going to mount the fuses and relays you'll be using. Now, while some racers with very basic installations may skip the fuses and relays in favor of simplicity, many installations simply should and must have them. Uh, for those installations that will be utilizing them, make sure your mounting location meets as many of the following uh, suggestions as possible. First, you should always be able to access these with relative ease. Fuses and relays can fail, uh, and if they do, you don't want to have to take your car apart just to get to one. If you foresee adding additional features down the road that will require more fuses and relays, make sure you're leaving yourself a little bit of room uh, so that you can add them as you need to. Now, if you're using Electromotive's fuse and relay block, we do sell additional fuse and fuse holders that you can link together uh, with, the, with the existing uh, relays and fuses. Uh, so if you do need 
to add additional relays for whatever functions you know, and you're using this kit, um, consider buying your relays and your fuse blocks from us. Uh, anyway, lastly, try to mount them relatively close to the ECU. It'll significantly simplify the installation. It'll require less wiring to be run through the vehicle. Um, if you're building a panel uh, to mount the ECU like we are, uh, you consider mounting the fuses and relays directly to that. It'll definitely make the installation go a lot easier. You'll be able to do a lot more wiring outside the vehicle. Um, it'll just be a uh, you know, much less uh, painful process, I guess. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look what we're going to be doing with our Nova. Uh, maybe that will give you some ideas for your installation. Now, as I stated before, our false glove box, because of its size, was going to give us the opportunity to use it to mount some of our other components. And, of course, we're going to use this to mount our fuses and relays. Now, the fuses are going to mount on the front of the panel and be accessible through the front of the glove box. They're easy to replace the blown fuse if we need to. Um, it'll look nice, clean, and neat. Uh, as far as the relays, we're going to use the back ledge we've created here on our false box as a location for the relays. Um, I mean, as you can see, you know, we can probably fit a dozen or so relays there, even though we'll probably only need about three or four uh, when this installation is done. But uh, as you can see, this false glove box has just become a bit of a slam dunk. Once the fuse and relay mounting has been determined and you know where your ECU is going to be mounted, uh, we should know roughly how the main portion of the harness is going to have to run through the vehicle. This means we'll likely have to pass through the firewall or the trunk divider or both. Um, so when determining a pass-through, keep a few of these things in mind. Does the vehicle have a pass-through that already exists and that you can use? Um, will you pass through the harness using a conventional grommet like we're going to use in our Nova, or are you going to uh, use a bulkhead connector for you know, easier engine removal in a race car, for example? Um, if you're running the battery wire through uh, the same firewall, consider a separate location for that uh, than the main harness, because you don't want to group the main harness together with the high current wires that are going to the battery. It might cause some bleed over or some interference. Um, avoid running the main harness through an existing pass-through if that existing pass-through is already being used by something else like a starter cable or a heater core hoses or steering column or something else. You don't want to have your uh, main harness get damaged or uh, be interfered with or you know, cause some kind of problems down the road. Um, now, if you are cutting through the firewall like we will, uh, always make sure to double check both sides before you drill a hole. Um, I can't tell you, you know, going back to the years that I've been doing uh, uh, automotive 12 volts, how many people I've seen find a perfect spot on the firewall uh, and drill a hole right into the brake booster or something like that. It can be a, a very expensive mistake. So make sure you, you know, uh, double check both sides before choosing the location. Uh, and then, of course, you know, cut with confidence. So let's go ahead and uh, go over where we're going to cut through uh, our Novus firewall. In our Nova, we've identified a location right in the center of the firewall behind the engine, down low above the, uh, above the transmission. As all the connections we have to make are between the valve cover, this location will allow for minimal routing through the engine compartment, since when we're done, the goal is to see as little wiring under the hood as possible. Now here's the grommet we'll be using to get the main harness through the firewall. Just a little tip for people cutting a hole in the firewall like we'll be doing, Make sure that you use some primer or paint after you've cut the hole through the firewall to minimize the possibility of rust. Now, for the battery power to the fuse and relay, we've chosen an existing unused hole and found a grommet to fit it. You'll find the, it's hard to see in the camera shot, but it's right here where the fender attaches to the firewall. Since it's the same side as the battery, we can tuck the wire into the fender for a clean tuck wire look. Now that the wire routing has been determined, the last thing we have left to decide is where we'll mount the coils. Now obviously if you're using existing coils that are compatible with the electromotive system, you can skip this step. Um, if you're using our DFUs, keep in mind our coils don't have any electronics in them, so you can mount them just about anywhere within reason. You obviously don't want to mount them so close to the header or the exhaust system that they're going to melt. 
Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to mount them, say, to the front of the cylinder head, for example, that, not a problem. Um, a few things, though, to keep in mind when you're choosing a location are the harness length. Uh, the length from the, uh, of the wires from the ECU to the coils shouldn't be any longer than 12 feet. Um, now, plug wires. Now, yes, you should have the plug wires as short as possible, but don't forego an installation location just because it's not within a foot of the spark plug. Uh, a longer spark plug wire is not going to cause any kind of huge problems. Um, when you are picking a location for a particular engine, keep in mind that sometimes the spark plug wires need to cross from one side of the engine to the other. For example, our big block Chevy, uh, each one of these two post coils is going to supply uh, a spark to a cylinder on one of the two banks. So you can't, if, for example, mount the coil pack on one side of the engine and only run that half of the motor with, the, uh, with that one coil pack. Two of those wires are going to have to cross over. Um, that only works uh, with motors that have a flat crank. Uh, for example, a Ferrari. Uh, you can actually do that. They're basically two independent four-cylinder motors. But on a conventional small block Chevy, big block Chevy, Ford, Mopar, got to cross over, so keep that in mind. Um, also, for some applications, you might be using our single tower coils. If you are, uh, keep in mind that the while the mounting tabs are steel reinforced, you don't want to mount these in such a way that the coil body ends up getting any kind of flex. So if you're going to be stacking the coils together or if you're going to be mounting them to a surface, make sure you use some kind of a hard metal spacer between the coil and the mounting surface or the coil and the other coil so that you don't torque the coil and cause it to damage in terminal. Anyway, um, let's go over what we're going to do on our Nova. When we went over the coil mounting options with the Nova's owner, he chose the rear of the valley, roughly where the distributor would have been. For this, we fabricated a simple aluminum mounting bracket that we then painted black with some high temp engine paint. As you can see, we'll be able to mount the coils right there neatly between the fuel rails. So in conclusion, take time to plan out some of the more critical aspects of your installation. This can not only save you a lot of time once you get started, but it can also make the job a little less daunting. Uh, anyway, um, thanks for taking the time and we'll see you in the next video.